Uh, I would suggest uh, there's some episodes I'll send you, or you can check out the Six Lead. Go to rickglassman.com, click on the Six Lead to see an award winning <laughs> web series, or on Amazon Prime. That's as we see it. Start with the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, Rick Glassman. Let's welcome Rick Glassman to the How He Does Stuff podcast. That's our cold open, by the way. Wow. <laughs> totally undirected. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. This is stuff. I'm sitting beside your other stuff, Jacqueline Schultz. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. You're my daughter, mm -hmm. and my buddy Lou is here, and and I'm very excited about this. Though he's sitting nowhere near a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about this? Rick Lassman, who uh, was on the podcast earlier this season, um, has become. Uh, we'll put up a clip here. But once I come in, we show me, oh, you brought your own headphones, jump cut. But he hasn't put his headset on yet. I plug him in, jump cut. Hey, I see what you're doing. Oh, that's not working a thing, jump cut. I can't hear on my left. They give me the new quarter inch, jump cut. They, this is a screw in one. They give me the new headphones, jump cut. It's not working, jump cut. You take yours off. We keep in me saying we're going to start over. Theme music. This is my podcast, Rick, <laughs> not yours. But I'm going to use this on my podcast to cut to a commercial. So oh, just wow. send me this part. Do I have to say Marshall's flooring? Marshall, uh, carpet one and rug gallery. Carpet one rug gallery. Marshall's carpet one rug gallery, which is his family's own business, right. which he, uh, oh, look at this. You're touching. Yeah. You're touching Lou. I've gotten since, I don't know if, how much of a coincidence, I don't think entirely at least, since you first came over, I've been better. Oh, you see, I'm a healer. It's you. It is me. But uh, even more than touching, I thought w the last time you were on, we really engaged our audience mm. and we listened to our audience. And Lou, who you're touching, got a lot of hate. They oh. thought that you hated Lou. No, no. They hated Lou. Yeah. No, they yeah. said that you, you, that you gave Lou. But tell your audience who will come over to see how you're uh, putting up with Lou again. Did how you we <laughs> I'm putting up with Lou again. So here's what it is. Also, I also wanted to bring my own headphones and I forgot. You don't have to wear headphones. You're um, gonna hear but me. But I might not for a little bit because I gave a spritz. Okay. Uh, Lou, Lou? Yes. Lou, your game is... I'm what? Your game. Okay. You Into the mic a little bit more. Uh, your game <laughs> is like a, a, a an awkwardness that is different than mine, but I also have an awkwardness. So for us to be able to navigate it without knowing each other while also trying to have, at least I was, a, some sincere conversation in that time, it was just all over the place. So what I think the hold on a second, Lou. What I think the audience <laughs> was picking up on was me just being like, you know, being honest, and you were the same. I had a great time with you. After eight dinnerments, oh, I right. feel sick. Right. Never mind. Maybe I didn't like you. <laughs> but he is he is that kind of awkward. We like him. He is that you know, you add that special little like you and I should have a sincere conversation. And you know, it's like you you have a good time at a party, right? Thank you. I wasn't inviting you, <laughs> but you're welcome. No, misunderstood. You're welcome. You have a, we have, we're having a good time at the party, and then there's something going on at the party. Did you, did you see that guy in the corner that was, yeah. welcome to Lou. Yeah. Right. I'm I... really good at keeping secrets. Let me give you an example. <laughs> how, can, how can you give an example of a secret that you didn't keep? You know what I noticed though? You have like a die hard fan base. I think, well, I mean, there's a lot of people on that come on here that have a die hard fan base, but yours really like stuck up for you. I've but never seen that in the comments of before. Everybody, we've been doing this for almost a year and we've done everybody from Sarah Silverman to Bill Burr to, it, 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 you name it, they've been here. Leno, everybody has been here. Your fan base seemed to be the most um, <laughs> protective. Vocal. Do you think it's protective? And it is. Yeah. And that's because what I've learned about you, you have this wonderful um, vulnerability that you share that makes you um, very approachable. I, now I know you better. I wish I knew as much about you. And I kind of delved in because, and we'll talk about this, your new show, which is off the charts. As we, as see, we it, see it on Amazon Prime. As we see it, which is like the number one show on Amazon Prime, it's got, you know, like, if you can give it six stars, it's got six stars. It's brilliant. It's the <laughs> Why same. Why don't you say five? 
because I think it's worth more <laughs> than the stars right. that are giving you extra. Like when rock and rollers like bring turn it up to eleven. That's what it is. Right. But it, and and for those that haven't seen it, you have to watch it because it is based on the life of three uh, people who are in the spectrum, and. Um, what is also kind of amazing about it, not only is it well-written and brilliantly acted, but everybody in the cast is legitimately in the spectrum. Is that correct? I didn't. I don't know the girl. Uh, Sue Ann, and I think technically, and I don't want you to get canceled, it's on the spectrum. I was talking about color, the shades, the colors. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, <laughs> Sue Ann, right, she's uh, Asian, and Albert and I are white, so you should have Albert on the podcast. I was wrong. It's on the spectrum. <laughs> uh, on the spectrum, yeah. And you were di di diagnosed actually um, five years ago. Uh, yeah, I've been following you. So I saw you, and you were brilliant on uh, with Trevor Noah on the Daily Show. On the Daily Show, that was my first late night. I've been drew. I've been. I've been wanting to do late night for the. It's not the same typical like sitting on a couch and doing bits and stuff, but that was my first late night. I was so excited to do it. And you were brilliant on it because you. you were you were not only articulate and smart, but you were funny and charming, and uh, you have become more than just a comedian, but an advocate. Are you? Do you consider yourself an advocate for autism? No, no, uh, I don't. I don't. That scares me a bit because, and and I was really glad that organically it came up the way it did when I did that interview with Trevor because I was able to tell him that. I don't want to be an advocate for something I'm still learning about. Which he thought was a brilliant statement. And was also yeah. allowed me to kind of like get, hey, listen, I, I don't know much. And now I could be present in like not pretending or you thinking I'm pretending. But what has been happening with this show, because it's been doing well and there's been so much press and that's kind of like the, the talking point a lot. Well, because we have not... Well, I guess we have. I mean, if there is a show about living in urban America, they'll cast people who are black. Yeah. But there, it has yet, or if there's a show about women, they'll cast females. Black people. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's a show about autism, and it is. Yeah. Go, were you going to say something? I, I, this actually brings up a good topic, and we touched on it a little bit when Sarah Silverman was here. Do you? Because we her. were talking about, she says that if there's a Jewish character... They should be played by Jewish people. Yeah, I watched that. Do you hear that spraying sound? <laughs> Lou. Yes. That was Lou putting in breath freshener. Hey, you know what? Are you going to kiss him? I do, I've do. i done the same thing over and over and over again and got different results. Take that, Einstein. <laughs> okay. All right, but my question is, and then there's a lot of arguments on the other hey. side. <laughs> Seems like the same result to me, but it's not bad. <laughs> There's an argument on the other side from actors that if you're an actor, that, I know it's disgusting, right? His coughing. Yeah. Well, the same result every it's time up. he sprays that stuff yeah. and makes him cough. You cough from the stomach, and that that's deep. Yeah. Oh, that's his ass. Oh. That was below the stomach. <laughs> you haven't been here long. Yeah. I can hear it. There is a little phlegm in there. There is something going on. Yes. It's yeah. not his. I'm, oh, who's, who's I'm is always, it? He takes he whoever uh, decides to donate a loogie. I'm to always loogie. working on something. So this show, go ahead. What, what you were saying? You were saying something. No, serious. I want to know your belief. Like you were saying that these characters are people that are played by actual people that are on the spectrum, yeah. right? Do you believe that whatever it may be, whether it's autism or Jewish or those are the big two, gay? Right, that's up there. Yeah. Well, do you think it should be played by someone who is authentically? I have a very strong. In that category? I have a very strong take on this. Okay. Brilliant question. I do not believe that any of these things need to be played by somebody who has the most authentic truth in their real life to it. I don't think that only people with autism should be playing autistic characters. You could argue it's not for me to say, but I don't feel that way about homosexual. I don't feel that way about Jewish. I do think outside of outside of giving people opportunity, which is a variable and should be considered and exists, from a selfish point of view, when you're telling a story, you want somebody who could bring the most authentic thing to it. So when you have somebody who's lived a certain life and knows a certain thing, they could just tell this story a little bit better. But it's a it's a it's a fine line to then only say only these people could do it because then you're not acting anymore and everyone is only playing themselves. I think it's great that our show isn't just casting neurodiverse people to play neurodiverse characters. There are um, the guy who plays my boss, uh, and I'm, 
I'm not embarrassed, but I just don't remember his name. And maybe I could tell it to you and we could put it up on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Put, <laughs> Jeremy, put the name of the cast. I'll send it to the you. Actor. Great. Well, look up the cast of that and then we'll say. He's great. Your father, we know, is, um, is, he's is not. Joe, he's Joe. not one of the, uh, uh, the principals. He's in a few episodes, but he has uh, autism and he plays a neurotypical character. And the writing staff and the PAs and a lot of people on the production have autism so or are directly connected to it. It just fosters an environment of just people Nurturing. that, what's that? Nurturing? Ex yeah, which I just feel is ironic that like when people have this idea of the way we're supposed to be around a certain type of person, which they are making this thing up, they're just nicer and more accepting. And this thing is just like everyone was just calm. And I don't know why that has to be on an autistic set, but... But you didn't know about your own autism until... That's why I was a little nervous about this show, not to play the character, which I felt I could do well. But if the show works and I have to do this stuff, I just felt like, who am I to talk about this stuff? And everyone, no, you, you quoted somebody, which I thought was a brilliant quote. And, you and met one person with autism, it means you met one person with autism. Um, and that was very true on set when I met uh, Sue Ann and Albert, of which... I just did a podcast with them. I don't know when this comes out, but it probably just came out. But we talk about this. This podcast has not been out yet. Oh, you, oh, you don't do live. <laughs> this is not live. Oh, well, then you could go and check it out. Um, everyone, is so di everyone is so different. And the characters they're playing are so different. And it made it easier for me to accept that, like, I don't have to be an advocate for autism as much as just speak my truth from my experiences learning about what i know about autism and maybe that is what an advocate is well an advocate listen i'm, I'm not cutting you off am i cutting him off that's what you do i know anyway <laughs> the, the the thing is when i watch the show uh, my wife and i we go oh my god this reminds me of so-and-so or this is what it's like. Yeah. So what it teaches us, not only is it entertaining and uh, thought provoking, but it teaches us, and I don't know if that was the point of the show rather than just this is a, an interesting slice of life to kind of depict for entertainment purposes, but it teaches us to have uh, patience and to be more cognizant. You know, I think mm -hmm. if there's one problem in the world, it's like if somebody's different, looks different, acts different, is different than me, we don't like them, we have no patience with them, we don't understand them, and this kind of shows us, you know, another side that hasn't really been, you know, shown. Not not in this way, uh, also just based on the way it's being sold to the public of like, hey, this is a more authentic version, just people knowing that, I think makes them watch this not just in a place of entertainment, which it is, at least I, I think, and I know No, hope. it is. It is. But also, like, they're seeing something. And, and you talking about the patience is so true. I think that there's something in you, and I don't know, and I'm, I'm not joking when I say this. I don't know if it's because you're Jewish and that's familiar to me. You're a certain kind of Jewish that I grew up with. Or well, I felt very comfortable. I, I said this off, off uh, mic before, but I, I've done your podcast twice now. But the last time I did it. Which, which I think it, just came out by the time this comes out now. Okay. Well, I, when, <laughs> as we're talking, it hasn't come up, it hasn't come out, but I'm telling you, I loved your family. I, I was excited to talk to you again. I actually felt a little bit bad. Uh, uh, I felt like I owed you somewhat of an apology for the first time you were on the show, and, and so did your, your audience, but in the sense that what we do here and it isn't happening right now, but as soon as I, as soon as, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I light the loo fire, it can. Light the coffin one way. <laughs> yeah, well, we. I love chaos, and I uh -huh. love you know this kind of uh, noise and uh, weirdness and awkwardness. And you came into it, and and you know, one of the issues in your life is how do you deal? You, you know, the the world itself feels kind of awkward and different, and. We, I, you know, I do have, I, I've never been diagnosed with being on any part of the spectrum, but I, I'm sure I am. I know that I have. You got some stuff going I on. I got a lot of stuff. I have OCD and depression and anxiety. AGT. Uh, yes. Uh, AGT Canada. <laughs> yes. So I have every initial and maybe even an STD. So the point, the point <laughs> is that coming into a, 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 a a situation that is manufactured to be chaotic when life feels chaotic, I felt like you were really uncomfortable. 
Don't you think that that's why we like that chaos so much is because we are used to it and it's it's a sense of control and when we're in this chaos it makes it easier to to make jokes about spraying headphones or not touching people or doing But I didn't I wasn't sure that your audience or you even understood that that was the I wasn't I didn't anticipate it because I had watched some podcasts and it didn't seem that way. Uh, also, I never met you. And what's an interesting dynamic that happens in podcasting a lot, at least from my perspective, is I meet people that I'm a fan of and or know of, um, and they don't know anything about me. So like, <clears throat> it's different, and not for better or worse, it's different when you come in and, and, and you're meeting somebody for the first time and you don't really get to meet them. Right. But- I'm projecting things that I already know. Like what I was really excited about when you guys asked me to come on here was to talk to you because people call me Howie Mandel forever. Like people always say, oh, you, you're are you like Howie. And I don't know if they mean it in a derogatory way. I know it's playful. <laughs> uh, and that's not an insult to no, you. No, no, but, 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 no. But no, and it's not an insult to me. And it's also playful. You know, uh, Bill Maher the other day when it, on, on his. Another white guy. Yes. Bill Maher, people were saying that that wasn't fair. You heard this? Bill Maher was saying um, that he was talking about the mask mandate for kids in school. And he goes, what do we want to do? We want to turn all the kids into little Howie Mandels? You know, and I actually thought, what? Are you guys friends? Um, Yeah. Well, I mean, we're acquaintances. I didn't take that derogatorily at all, but I saw that people who are, uh, who follow me in that, they go, you know what he said? He's like, knock it. They were they were being very protective of yeah. me, somewhat like your fans were being protective of you, you know. And if they see you're uncomfortable, when you're not manipulating your discomfort, and right. somebody around you is manipul- manipulating the discomfort, yeah. they get mad at me. They got mad at Lou. That was and by also- the way, I am working on a documentary about the Glueca tribe. Now, this tribe is from the province of Elsinore. It's a tiny hamlet called Sand. And it's odd that they call it Sand because it's very lush and green. And the documentary is going to focus on a man by the name of Felix, who's the captain of their polo team. Yeah. That um, episode that you were on before also was like the most chaotic, I think, that we've had. Because we were also also doing the IVs. Natasha. Yeah. Right. And Howie, Howie, <laughs> yeah, Howie. I'm um, t- uh, the there was really a you're not sure my name. <laughs> it was, um, it's a it's a it's a device that I, I do on my pod a lot. I learned that there's certain ways of like getting people's attention that I notice people do, and that's one of them. You 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 say the name, and then you question, is that what it is? It engages them to answer, and then you assert it. That but, reminds me of Alex. I don't know if he wants to talk about it. Who? Maybe he doesn't. Who? Your son, Alex, what he learned when he was in speech, which he learned to say, is that okay, Alex? Uh, yeah, he. His, Alex, my son was a. Uh, uh, Hi, Alex. That's my son. He can his, get on mic. He was. He's a stutterer. His speech therapist. Oh. He was a stutterer. He went to. Why, why are you going, <laughs> look at the face. Why are you <laughs> saying? Oh, I was face. just thinking about him coughing. Oh. What stutter? Oh. What? <laughs> 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 I get it. But he learned in order to engage and to um, give a moment of thought. He says everybody's name first. So if he talks to you, he'll be like, Rick, and then say whatever it is that he's going to say in the sentence. So it gives him a moment to think about and process what he's going to say first. I forget why we're talking about that. Because you just mentioned saying something. Oh, because you asked if my name was Howie. But now you um, wanted to tell me something. There's uh, (laughs) uh, tricks I've learned. Like if you're pausing, you put your hands in circles. I talk about this on stage. Like there's ways of getting people to not jump in. And there's... uh, it, leaning forward gets people to to wake up. Like there's things that that there's like little moves that you could do, and uh, I make fun of some of those moves. Same, I did it first. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> do you do them on stage? Well, the couple that I have done on stage and I've done on the Tonight Show. One was if you look, if you say something, if I go Rick, and then I look over my shoulder before you think, I, I think say it's it, a secret, or it's more important than it is, right? If you go Rick. Look back, and then I go. I had tuna yesterday. Now, just if I go, Rick, I had tuna yesterday. Who it, cares? Who gives a fuck? But, but if like, I look to yeah. see if anybody else was listening, <laughs> it sounds like it's important for you and everybody in earshot yeah. to know that I had tuna. Sounds. Do important. you want to open for me? <laughs> I, I my brother, I, I you know he listens to this, and I, I mean, my brother whispers words and sometimes whispers the wrong words to <laughs> emphasize things. Do you know that? <laughs> Like you know when people go, uh, so and so had cancer. You know, you you know that. 
being a Jew, they always whisper that. Or, you know, uh, you know, uh, Sheila, she died. You know, they do, the, the people will whisper. You're generally the word. a negative whisper or a, or a secret. Right, but my brother will like whisper literally. on the wrong word. He'll go, I'll meet you in the lobby. Let's take the elevator. Sure, yeah. And I, <laughs> why are you whispering that word? <laughs> How, if you have to take a big shit, just do it in the bathroom. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, that is Lou. Thank you for joining us, Lou. Oh my God! Come on, the other way. Listen, let me ask you this, Lou. Your Did dentist ever wake up in the middle of the night with a toothache and think, "Fuck, I'm closed tomorrow"? Well, it depends what time it is. If it's two thirty, oh. then they're open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gag! I'd love that was a open. double bubble. Double That's bubble. from Double Bubble. I don't know what Double Bubble is. <laughs> That's a, the the, the uh, chewing gum. Then they have the jokes in them. Didn't you have? Oh, double I bubble? doubt it's from that. It's maybe in it. This is another on or in the spectrum. <laughs> Just because it's in something doesn't mean it's from it. You never bought the bubble gum and then you saw the joke? Buddy, people my age don't go and buy bubble gum. <laughs> you know? It's a different generation. What do you kids chew on? Well, I'm not a kid anymore, but when I was a kid, we would buy like magic cards or nudie mags. We weren't buying bubble gum and When you were a kid, you were buying cards. nudie mags? When I was a teen, uh, when I was... 13 or so. I was in this um, before. I had to go to a special school, PEP, Positive Education Program. I'm not sure if you know about this. None of my education was positive. Well, it was it was like for troubled kids. Which you were you were a troubled kid? I don't. I, no judgment to the troubled. <laughs> well, it depends on what the trouble was. You know? Um, <laughs> but uh, I went to a school that was for like, it was right before you go to juvie or right after you got out of juvie. And like in every class, there was a teacher. A when teacher you say saying, juvie, you're not talking about yeshiva. I'm talking about oh, yeah, that's when you're Jew-y. studying your Torah portion. That's what right. I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and there was a restrainer in every class. So when kids would jump out the window or run around class, there would be somebody that would hold. Like you walk into the bathroom, there's just kids being held down. Get the fuck off. It was like like a, a more realistic version of what scared straight would be if it was an actual school. Why did you get sent to that? I was in a learning disabled class first. And then there was like a sub learning disabled class. I've talked about this on my pod before. Uh, I remember I was, they, they put me in, um, I was at a desk and they put blue tape around and I wasn't allowed to leave. So as a 12 year old who's hyperactive, of course, I'm going to do this stuff, you know, put pushing my, your foot, put on foot the out or you feet can't touch or I'd crawl around on my knees and I'd be a hyper weirdo. But yeah, I mean, I, I also, I get in, in, nervous when I repeat stories, but I didn't tell it on here. You never told this on here. Um, and I didn't listen to that episode of yours <laughs> <laughs> when you were there. Um, you know, uh, uh, people would um, take a pin and like stick it through the dead skin of your yeah. fingertips. Yes. Um, I would do that. Uh, and they were uh, taking notes of me that I never knew about. And it was Ricky stabs himself. Uh, Rick burns himself with cigarettes. I had a little mark from tough actin to actin because I found a spray. And if you do it upside down, um, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. But it was all of these things. What's tough actin to actin? You have I've athlete's never... foot. Like and you put air. it on your hand? If you turn it up, a canned air thing upside down and spray it, stuff comes out. That's what Lou's been doing for the last 10 minutes on the podcast. Yeah. That's what he's <laughs> been spraying into his mouth. Why don't you keep that just, a secret, Lou? You know, I just finished Here writing a book called called uh, How to Turn $50 into $40. This is the stuff that casino owners want you to know. And that book is still available. Lou, I got $20. If you could give me 15 minutes uninterrupted. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, start the clock. Um, you should so start they, a timer. They would put, yeah, the, the, the little... start the timer, uh, <laughs> Jeremy, yeah. and then speak up when his fifteen minutes is up, and let Lou shut up for fifteen minutes. You got it. Okay, <laughs> and that and that's Not predominantly a the cough. Word will come out of my mouth. Coughs for the next fifteen minutes. Shut up. <laughs> um, so they would say all these things about uh, me that I didn't know about. And then, like, there was a report at the end of the year, and on top of the things that I was doing, just like, yeah, you know, running around. I remember, I remember, uh, I was in half day. I was in in that class for half the day, and the other half I would get to go to a couple of the classes. But all the teachers knew that I was like this bad boy or whatever. So, like, you know, look out for Rick. Um, <laughs> also, don't touch his palm because he'll freak. <laughs> and uh, I remember I went it's to, like talking about myself, somebody else being me. It's so weird. That, <laughs> people, been, that's what I'm saying. People have been saying this. That the only difference is I don't buy bubble gum. So I, I remember I went to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and I came and I was coming back down the hall. And uh, a friend of mine, shout out to David Price, will put his Instagram heel here. He st- we still laugh about this sometimes because he'll go. She went uh, yelling, "Ricky's on the loose! Ricky's on the loose!" <laughs> I'm, I'm in the bathroom. I'm taking a piss and washing my hands. Probably the only one in the class. <laughs> um, 
but there was a whole bunch of stuff. So then I, I, I didn't get to go on the Washington trip. I don't know if that's out here, but yeah. you go to Washington, every, a lot of schools and, and I wasn't included in stuff and I already wasn't really included with friends. So like, I just was so far removed and I wasn't embarrassed yet. Cause I didn't really realize what it was. I just remember it, it felt bad. I didn't like it. And then in ninth grade, the only way to get out of this class, which was a full-time class. Oh, the reason I brought this up, by the way, was uh, there was a kid in that class that bought me a Playboy. But anyway, um, was to go to Pep. And if you go to Pep and you could graduate from Pep, then you could come back. That was like that school next to yours. You know that school? Indian Hills. Indian Hills. Yeah. Speaking of Indian Hills, uh, there's a uh, – maybe this is inappropriate. I know. There's I nothing inappropriate on this show. Um <laughs> Uh, no, I think it's a, a, maybe it's an Indian casino. It made me think of it. But I was driving to Palm Springs and my arms were tired. And I saw a sign for you with uh, Lovitz. Right. Lovitz is opening for you? Yeah. Do you guys want to open for me? <laughs> I, want to, I want to come to that show. Okay. All right. And you go on last? Uh, I would love to do a guest spot. But that's not what I was inviting myself you could, on. You, but come and do it. Uh, but I, I, uh, I don't, know, don't know Lovitz. He is hysterical. I hate him. No, no, no. No, I'm joking. He's so funny. <laughs> He's one. He is so funny and so genuinely funny, even off the uh, off. He is so funny. I let's call him. Okay. Want to call him? Uh, Do you know him? I don't know him. Uh, I did just rewatch the wedding singer the other day, and he, he comes on. He comes on screen. Your po his posture, you just laugh at. Can I tell you? I know him from when I was younger, and he used to meet up with us in Malibu sometimes. The funniest experiences, even when I was younger, and I didn't really understand what was funny. I knew, like he was hilarious all the time. Every time we went anywhere, right, Dad? Uh, he, I he's one of the honestly one of the funniest. Yeah. Like, she just sent it to you. Can you FaceTime him, Howie? And, uh, you want to FaceTime him? Yeah, FaceTime, but screen record. It wasn't 15 minutes, Lou. I'm taking it back. We'll get another <laughs> opportunity Plug soon. Have you, met, have you met him? Uh, I think I saw him once when I first moved out here in the John Lovitz Club at Universal was open. I saw him there, but no, I don't know him. Let's see if he answers. Okay, I am going to be super rude right now. I have to walk out and call my husband really fast. No, that's fine. We'll, cut right to, we'll, we'll be right back with a word from Marsha no. Rod Gallery. <laughs> Sorry. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! You know, he's doing that, and for the people that don't watch him, hmm? what's what's going on? Hi, oh, John. John. What's happening? How come I can't hear him? Wait, I can't hear you, buddy. Let me take, can you hear me now? I don't know why I can't hear you. I'm going to screen record you. I'm doing my podcast right now. Is it okay to talk to you? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm in the bank. You can take my mask off. Don't take your mask off. He's in the bank. He can't take his mask off. Um, we, can, uh, we can hear. How do I... Uh... He'll call us later. Well, no, I'm going to... Here you go. There he is. No, uh, the reason I have a guy on, Rick Glassman. He's a really funny actor, podcaster... And he said, Hi, Mr. He's, he's such a huge fan of yours. And I said, I know him. Don't I know you? Biblically. <laughs> what are you cashing? What's it from? Is it from yeah, the wedding singer? No. No. Let me call you back. I got, I got to do this real quick. Can we talk to the teller? Oh, no. no. That, that, once, once someone is no, serious, you can call me back. That. Okay. All right. So, all right. I get it. All right. We can't. I know. Put the, I'll put it. Bye. Whenever you're in play, whenever He's I'm going to call back, whenever He's going to call back and I'll plug it in. But when I plugged it in, it wasn't coming through. We got it now. Yeah, we just wanted you to try it while there was still sound. Okay, yeah. when he calls back, we'll try it. You know it. what? We could cut all that out. We just came back from Marshall Rugg Gallery and we'll do it again. You know, he's saying that when you go to his podcast, your podcast is one of the slickest, most amazingly produced podcasts I've ever seen. There's animation. There's he'll put a hat on you when there isn't a hat. There's these little I mean, goblins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lou, one for 87. Is it 15 minutes? He said amazing. 
It's not 15 minutes. <laughs> Do I have to restart it? Um, I feel like I feel like this was a note from production. What? Just, sue me. <laughs> <laughs> just makes it easier you on the mix. But I'm just down. saying, like, it was amazing. The first time I was on, you made me have, like, this huge penis. Well, no, that's just genetics. But we did do a beanstalk. <laughs> Shout out to Tom Bates, by the way, who animates with me. Not for me, not with me. But it's it's amazing. The music and the animation and the editing. And then I come back here and you're just sitting on a couch talking to me. And we do absolutely nothing. Yeah. And you're what I so think rich. Is, <laughs> I'm I, saving money. You're spending all your money yeah. on animation. Well, you have a hologram machine. Man. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> you don't use any of this stuff. I'm not even here. You spend I'm your, at home. This is a hologram. You spend your money on stuff that nobody sees. Which I guess is kind of cool. I am wearing expensive underpants. Um... Uh, the, the sponsor of the podcast? No. Okay, no, no. We did have a, the underpants. We once when we started. Well, no, I have no sponsors to... now. You have sponsors. I know you and your dad read. And you really don't have ads. None. None. You swear to God? Yeah. None. Why? I he didn't doesn't know. want him. Wow. Do you want to advertise your podcast on mine? Yeah. But yeah. like <laughs> officially, <laughs> yeah. And pay me for it? I don't no. even have to pay you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't want, I don't want, it. no, Good it's just too, because then I'll make money and then there's taxes. <laughs> I just don't want, it. no, the truth is when we started, we had, we were normal and we had uh, a company came to us that was distributing this podcast and they had ads and we had to do ad reads. And eventually what I'd like to do is build the audience. I'm finding my way. This is just finding my way. It is very, this episode is very different than the episode we started with. Mm. And in two months from now, this may not you seem to have found your groove but you're they're not advertising a certain format they're just advertising on your show to your audience. right so we would get notes you know to go oh how we make this more personal notes from whom the advertisers oh really well and then it was also uncomfortable like like we would advertise me and jackie would have to read ads for it was always erectile dysfunction um, which is not fun to read with your daughter. It was Manscape. Manscape, which is not fun to read. She does In shave. Underwear. She does shave me, but that's <laughs> we don't want to talk about that on the air. Could we cut to uh, an old? Uh, I did Manscaped. Uh, it was one of the first ads I had. Uh, uh, it was during the pandemic. Can we cut to one of my Manscaped ads real quick? You, you want, want an to, ad? Will you, will you send? Will you send? <laughs> Jeremy, hey, 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 Tommy, we'll, we'll take care of this in post. Okay. You know, before I used this razor, my dick was only this big. And after using Manscaped, now my dick is this big. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Oh! <laughs> um, I'm going to send it to you. You'll, you'll edit this part out. I'm going to send you like a 20 second clip to use. And we're back. I I feel like Jer I feel like Jeremy has had a pretty easy job until you come to what? the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, are you happy with how uh, Rick is directing this? Jeremy? Yeah, send send all that. I'll send you. I'll send you the ass. Will you be putting it in, Jeremy? Do you listen to everything he says? No, I don't listen to anything. No, but <laughs> but you will really. I want whatever he says because I want it to. However this goes, I want it to be on Rick. <laughs> Just send me the raw footage. I'll take care of this. One. <laughs> um, but what I really wanted to do while I was here today, and and I I always forgot when we're done with this because our episode when you came on with uh, my mom, dad, and cousin Teddy. Which are their characters? Comes There's, out. Um, when does this come out? Do you know? No. When does this come out? Do you know when this airs? Well, uh, maybe next Tuesday, but we never plan. So, so. a week or two ago, <laughs> a week. Or, by the time you're watching, when this, does so, yours come out? Uh, it's coming out on uh, next week. Then we'll be, then we'll make then we'll do it the same week. What day of the week does yours come out? Audio only Monday, YouTube Tuesday. And Boy, are my arms tired? Wednesday is a T-shirt. This I will so come out the same okay. day. Okay. We'll definitely make this come out the same day. Do you hear that, guys? Jeremy, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> but I want to, Howie, I have three ads for that that I have to record, and I was wondering if we had time and the energy when we're done with this. I would love to do my ads on our episode in your studio, and then we could also do an ad for this episode. I love what you're thinking. I love the way you're that's, thinking. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. It's amazing to me, like after going back and seeing you on there with the big schlong hanging out in all the animation. You actually plan and know this stuff either ahead of time or while you're recording, which uh, is amazing to me. It's uh, one of the, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of how, I, how I've been doing it because I am live editing constantly. Yeah. And it, I found that I didn't, 
unlike you, I did not see your podcast before I was on. I know you watched ours, sure. but I kind of like to be surprised. It's not, it's not for you. Yeah. You, it's the, not for me. What do you think? I'm old. You're just, you, you're a bubblegum buyer. <laughs> yeah. So hey, I found that. Inc- go ahead. If you've ever been on a turnip minutes. truck, if you've ever been on a don't turnip, finish it and it's yours. If you've never been don't on a turnip truck, it's yours. wait, wait. He's offering money. If how you, much are you offering? Twenty how, bucks. Twenty bucks. He doesn't yeah, finish. You guys are all just rich, huh? If <laughs> you've ever been on a turnip truck like, truck like I have, the floors I want you to know are very, very slippery, and it's incredibly easy to just fall right off, especially when you just wake up. So don't fucking judge. I don't uh, even understand. Like, I get the interruption. I get the device. But then the things you're saying, it's just, here's what it is. Yeah. Punch it up, Lou. Here's what I'm saying. I'm on a turnip truck. You've never been on a turnip truck. The, The floors are very slippery, so it's very easy to fall off. That's what I'm fucking saying. What's a turnip truck? A turnip truck. A truck that has turnips in it. No. Okay, so anyway, when, when, uh, <laughs> hey everyone, I want you to go in the comments and say "fuck Lou." No, 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 no. <laughs> they, 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 too late. Can't, can't take it back. back. Lots of stuff. Can't Lou take has, it back. Lou has a big penis. They don't have... uh, Lou has great comedic timing. Just needs a d- different script. Yeah. Figure out something like that. He's reading. I wrote a book. It's called Eight yeah, and a Half Seconds. It. And what's really interesting about this book is it took me eight and a half seconds to write it. How often does that happen? Oh, Lou. This was your moment, man. You were going to come in and you were going to be like, hey, guys, I've been working on some jokes. I spent more jokes. than eight and a half seconds writing. These are them. stories. These are truisms. Yeah. He doesn't tell jokes. Louisms. 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 Oh, oh, oh God. God. You know what? You, you're, you're, you're a lazy uh, uh, hand cover. It's, you're too far away with the cover. Rick, yeah. go fly a hike. Let me say it again. Go fly a hike. You're I want to ask you. To cover uh, where, 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 uh, can I ask you about yeah. your personal life? Yeah. Can I ask you about your personal life? Uh, there are some things that I. Is there? Any, do you know? I don't know anything. Yeah, you can ask me about my personal life. Yeah, and you could say I don't want to answer that. Well, even are you? Are you? Uh, you work with uh, Kevin Bacon's daughter, who is quite attractive. Do you have a he relationship? He has a girlfriend. With, are you? I don't know. Are you saying that? Are, is it about her shits? Is that what you're going to ask? No, I did see her talking about her farts, and she <laughs> takes Big Kevin. Shit. Kevin Bacon's daughter takes huge shits. Ooh, man, there's a huge shit. Whoa, look at this. Wow, this is really cute. Should I try it on? I'll try it, for size. So cute. I think that this fits. It's a small. I'm Kevin Bacon's daughter, and I take huge shits. Okay, great. You got another asset. <laughs> We're back. No pun intended. No, I was asking, are you guys romantically linked in any way? So, Sosie? Yeah. No. Kara Sedgwick and I had a little bit of a thing years ago, no. which is her mom. I do, we do know that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you've seen Kara Sedgwick naked? Unfortunately, no. But, but you had a thing. Yeah. Oh, I, I work with her. I work just work with her daughter. Okay. okay. No, she's an attractive woman. Listen, I, and this is going to sound so corny, and I'm going to sound like such a snowflake, but all women are beautiful. <laughs> what are you, heterosexual? <laughs> <laughs> all right, two for eighty nine. <laughs> Punch up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, can I show you a, oh, a picture Lou. of a shadow puppet that I made? I created a shadow puppet of my hand, and if you look really closely, you can see on the top left quadrant. That looks like a thumb, and then those he's not even close to them. Appendages yeah. they resemble fingers. He's just got a picture of his a it's shadow. Just, shadow, it's shadow, just five shadow, wieners. Shadow puppet of his hand. He's he does not shadow puppet to the mic. At all. What? Lou is the only person on a podcast where I would be like, Lou, uh, move the mic away a little bit more. <laughs> so I think that was good. <laughs> he's funny from afar. <laughs> from a let's hey, let's find out. <laughs> I want to tell you some stuff in the booth. Tell, try to say the next thing. Move the mic really far away and See do it. See what happens. Here. See what happens. Just that's the most racist he's, shit. He's, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just read something from your list. He br- comes in with this stuff. Go ahead. Uh, 
Um, well, I was just going to say that uh, this is something that... Pull it farther. Further. Before uh, Bruce Jenner... No, further. No. Further. Yeah, yeah. Go out, actually, go out in the hall for a second. Go in the hall. Go in the hall and say we, it. I want to see if we can hear you. Close the door. Like, though. Go out in the hall. Go it was the, about to be something super inappropriate. Probably. Wait, Wait, close the door. I just want to see if we can hear it through the door. It'll be a funny, practical audio yeah. gag. There is a door. There's, There's a, a door. door. There's a door. <laughs> yeah, close that and tell us. Go in the bathroom. There's no door. door. <laughs> no, what did he say? And he came back in the door. <laughs> no, from the other side. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Lou's time is up. Oh, Lou's <laughs> time is up. It's 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. It's so. like 20. <laughs> um, it's 15 minutes. Lou is back in the room, um, but we're going to keep the mind. Like Boy, are we tired. Minutes. Didn't that feel like a long 15 minutes? It like a long 15 fucking minutes. Because you were talking through the whole thing. <laughs> Wait, but, but before before chaos ensued for the past like eight minutes or so, uh -huh. I don't even remember what we were talking about. It was the, the school, the going to the thing, the editing. I don't remember, but we were having a nice conversation. Yeah, we were. I want to I wanna have a nice conversation some more. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what was i saying oh all right from the very beginning about uh my uh my audience being protective yeah <laughs> um i think for better uh, you know the it maybe you're like i don't know if you are because you have such you're so successful but maybe it was started a certain way but we are i'll speak for myself and i feel like you you'll connect to the sum at least uh very particular and it could turn people off um, I'll speak for myself at least. Okay. Uh, I find that there's more people hate things about me that are indicative of who I am and how I need to be more people hate that than love it. But I love my little slice of people who love me. I think what that is because you are very kind and likable. And what that is, is, um, people are judging what they saw and it's not th for them. At least they think it's not, and it might not be, but they're not giving it a chance. And then they move away. The people that stay either liked it from the beginning or grew to like it, and now they like it, right? Right. Something I really think is beautiful about our show is you meet these characters that maybe you're into. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be a turnoff as well. And you're like, oh, I like this person. I don't like this person. This person's annoying. This person's mean, whatever it is. But because it's a show and there's an arc to it and it's written a certain way, you keep watching it. And then you fall in love with these characters. And it's not because of anything that's different than real life. But in real life, when you don't like somebody, you don't give them an episode two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just go away from them. Right. But when you get to know somebody, you'll realize that either those things don't bother you anymore or that's just a small thing. But there's so much more to offer. You're, what you're speaking about is marriage. You know, but it really is, you know, when you're when you spend that much time and you become that intimate and you become a partner with somebody. I've been with my wife for 42 years. Happy. Uh, happy anniversary. You've do, oh, It's not my anniversary, but well, you've been doing the podcast for a year, right? Not quite. Okay. I think this is episode 48. OK, I haven't even done 50 episodes. How many episodes have you done? Uh, I think 140. I think ours that's just coming out is in the high 140s. Right. So that you've done a hundred more than me. Yeah. So what I was what I was saying in in uh, in terms marriage. of what you well marriage it's you learn to you got to stick with it. There's uh, there's going to be so many moments and so many things that you don't like, and too many people give up too fast. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a friend, whether it's somebody you're watching, whether it's a concert, whether it's a comedy show, whether it's a podcast, they walk away. When you decide to make a commitment, and and that's what marriage is, you're going to find probably more things. Nobody loves everything. I'm <laughs> sorry, Bob. <laughs> I'm laughing. I don't know if people are picking it up. Oh, at they home. heard. They heard the cough. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in. Vegas. We're in the middle of something <laughs> that's. I'm really liking Lou. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just one time. I'm gonna ask. Let us stay on this one. Okay. Let, let, let's stay on this one. We'll stay on this one. All right. Okay. We'll stay. And then. Okay. He, he wants to plug his. He's gonna be in Vegas March 28th. Is it just a sincere plug? Yes. yes. He's gonna be at the yes. Tropicana. It's a sincere plug. Yes. Give us a minute. <laughs> give us a minute. So, so, but what what, I, what I'm saying is, people give up too quickly. With yeah. television, with that's why YouTube is so big, or or a TikTok is so big because it's fifteen seconds, yeah. and then if you don't like it, it's it's over anyway. You don't even have to walk. Well, away. they go up to two minutes now, but I, I know the point you're Three. making. Three. Oh, small world. 
Yeah, you don't know what the kids are doing now. No, I know we, they're not buying bubble gum. <laughs> uh, but but your idea of marriage uh, or the analogy to it uh, is like a very big version of that. I think the, the the more global version that involves just interpersonal relationship as well is acceptance. And you're accepting these people for who they are, which means even if they're coughing, we'll still sit next to them, right? And I think for me, us maybe, yeah. um, there's something that once somebody accepts for better or worse, maybe it's not as easy to accept somebody like you and me than it is for somebody who is more what a lot of people define as, as mainstream, right? Or just connects easier, broader, less obstacles. You're right. But you know what I'm... And Let I'm me finish this out real go, quick. Go ahead. But what that does in turn is once somebody accepts you and there's a little bit of a challenge, it's almost like they discovered you, they found you, they get you better, they put in the time with you. So what I have found is that the people that are, you know, my audience or in a, in a more flattering way to say fans, they feel like, and not necessarily that they're wrong, they get me. Like when people take pictures with me, which has been happening now when I go to shows. And oh, and even when you're walking in the street having a coffee, I called you the other day. Remember? Yeah, sometimes it's, it's been happening. It's right. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they, uh, can I take a picture? And they, they, they don't come up and like, you know, put their arm around me. They know like, can I, I know you're, you know, and they're like, they're accepting already of me being like, yeah, but let's, let me stand a little behind you or whatever the thing might be. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just, there's the guy that I like. It's, there's the guy that I know because the only way you could like me is if I either get lucky or you get to know me. You know, I'm going to be in Vegas. Perfect. March 28th through April 3rd at the Las Vegas Tropicana Laugh Factory. And it falls if you notice, April 1st is part of those dates. That particular day, April 1st, I'm going to give away $87 billion. Wow. What are you going to do the other days? Ah, see, you well, got him. One of the things I'm going to do is talk about that old trick. Remember that old trick when you were a kid? They asked you to put your, put your ear against the side of a, of a wall. They would put your ear against the side of the wall, and then they punch you in the face as hard as they could. Remember that? Yeah, that was Pep. Yeah. So, anyway, the, what, what, go ahead. What I do think is amazing, though, is you have those fans that know you and love you. I think in this day and age, most people, or on the internet at least, whether it be social media, YouTube, Instagram, you're not really met with acceptance and love mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have that really strong fan base that's there for you and will stick up for you. Most of it is like just hatred, right? Well, it is. And you even, know. you know, you talk about people taking, like even as I got known in the business and then uh, accidentally let out that I have these issues that you and I share. Um, at first, it was really hard. Like somebody would go, come on, about, shake my hand. Are you talking about the Howard Stern thing once that Yeah, but, but even, even yeah, and past that, even past that, I would have to do a meet and greet and they would, and they'd go, come on, you can shake my hand. Right. Then I go, no, they go, you. but even, and then it became about them. They go, what do you think? I got germs. You think I'm sick? Well, you big shot. You can't shake hands. You can't, there was a lot of resistance. And now as people, as it, as time has gone on and people have, I've kind of, gotten to know me and I've just been around and they've heard little snippets of conversations like you and I are having, there are people that are more accepting. There's other people that aren't accepting and they make fun of it and they make a joke of it. And I make a joke of it because laughing at it is easier than crying, yeah. you know, about it. We talked about on my podcast, um, even bringing it up, I feel like it, it just, it really hit me when we were talking and just, uh, just the idea of surviving and the things that we do to survive and uh, on one hand, it's like it's a great tool that we figured out how to survive in these situations. But at the other hand, it's like it's such a bummer that we have to find a way to survive in something that could otherwise just be fun and light and playful. But I think everybody in life, whatever level that is, everybody in life is finding their way to survive, their way to be comfortable, their way yeah. to get from A to B and to the end of the day and to earn and to be productive Absolutely. or to find a relationship or to everybody's uncomfortable. But there's a difference. Uh, I, I agree with that. But some people need to learn a way to survive shark attack they don't feel the need to survive if they fall off their skateboard and when there's so many things that we have decided are obstacles and that's kind of what it is and that's where i be, i'm wearing i almost never wear pants they, they make me feel uncomfortable um you know, don't, be, be, clarify you I wear, wear i like to I have just my yeah i wear sweatpants <laughs> or shorts i like to show up with my balls just to the wind balls out <laughs> um, thank god you're wearing them today <laughs> and 
I, uh, I, I have a stylist now. Shout out to Luca. And uh, he's got me some pants that I had to wear for stuff. And I've requested a certain style feel. And now that I have pants, I'm like, I made a choice to put pants on. Um, you know, I'm not. Yeah. I, I can't wear pants either. And I wear pants to your podcast. <laughs> oh, is, I didn't know that was a thing. Pants is a problem for you? Yeah, it's uncomfortable. What, could, be, could you fit. explain why? Uh, because I feel constricted. I feel like really, it's really uncomfortable yeah. and I can't, it's really hard for me to think in pants. I'm, I'm The whole time I'm going this, I could feel the waistband, I could feel the fabric touching, uh -huh. I could feel the... It's like and, contacts for our legs. Right, and I, you know, and maybe that, maybe I am on the spectrum, but it's really hard for me to, I, and I'm forced to even on the shows that sensory I do. Sensory issues doesn't have to be part of the spectrum though. Well, I have sensory issues. Hey, Sound and feel. Numbers My, do it's, lie. It is on there though. Hmm? Uh, I think, I, I, and again, don't quote me on this, or quote me on it, but then at the bottom say he thinks. Uh, <laughs> that the the spectrum, it, it's not about where you are on the spectrum. Are you here versus here? It's the spectrum of all these different things, OCD, uh, speech impediments, uh, difficult making eye contact, uh, uh, um, sensory issues, the sound, whatever. And, and then there's certain things that you're more and or less sensitive to. And if there's a certain, um, I think there's something like if it's a certain amount of things, they consider that to be on well, the spectrum. It's how inhibiting, I think we all have those. We all are sensitive. We all don't like uncomfortable clothing. We all are not comfortable with somebody who we don't know in our face talking to us in a certain tone. We all are, but how a lot of people who aren't considered autistic or that- Neurotypical. Do, neurotypical. I, I don't know that term. What is nor neurotypical? Uh, neurotypical, uh, the, the idea of saying something is normal is stigmatizing to anything that is outside of that range. Also, what is normal? Uh, mm -hmm. But while typical is something that is more statistical, where you could look at what's more typical, literally there are more people that are this way. That So people view this as the standard. So a neurotypical is somebody who is, you know, what you're referencing versus neurodiverse. Right. Or, but people who know, go to work. Numbers every do lie. Numbers do lie, especially 7, 9, and 24, just for the record. So like people will show up every day and wear like a tie. Nobody says a tie is uncomfortable. With me sitting for an hour in a tie, I feel like I'm yeah. gonna pass out because I can't breathe. Yeah. Because there's something tight around my neck, you know? And, uh, and I've had so many shows where it was forced on me, you know, to wear a tie. And it's really hard for me. I have to do exercises to concentrate on what I'm doing so I'm not focusing on yeah. this is cutting off my air. Yeah. So, but we all have these, I mean, that sounds very, that's why I love even the title of your show, As We See It, because that's everybody. And no two people see it the same. And it teaches us to be aware of that not everybody sees it like you see it. What you're saying is also the, the thing I'm saying where everyone knows what it's like to need to survive and find their tools. Um, but not, but you have to do it <clears throat> a lot. You have to do it more than the typical. <laughs> you just cleared your throat and I saw he, he <laughs> Lou flinched. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Three for 90. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's exhausting. Not only to have to find a way to deal with a tie, but also to then have to calculate your life on like, do I accept this job where I have to wear the tie? Knowing that tomorrow I have to put the tie and now you're not present in today's world. And just anticipating the fear or even just learning the meditation to get away from it. It's just sometimes it's just so fucking exhausting. And it's why I, it's such a small thing, but I'm wearing pants and I didn't go back home to get the other headphones. And it's like, just fucking do it. And you did it. How do you yeah, feel? Fine. Good. I usually feel fine. But it's these things get in the way that don't that don't seem to get in the way of other people. You as know, often. So tell me what your dream is. What is your goal? Where do you want to be in life and in your career? What what do you, what is your do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, well, do? there's two things. They're not mutually exclusive, but I want to have kids. I want to have a family. I want to have a house. Um, I want to have a yard. I want to have a dog. Uh, or dogs. You started with there's two things and you've so far this listed is personal. nine. This oh, is personal. Oh, okay. This is like, you know, if, I, if, if I'm able to continue to my career and, and, and hopefully have it grow and make the kind of money to have a, a home, um, that's, you know, that's the, the, that's the uh, I want money for things and you need money for things. Well, you're, you're heading that way right now. You have um, a hit series. And then there's doing shows and comedy and stuff, but in a way to where it's not just about the money, right? Like what's the fun, the dream, the, 
So that is, uh, I, I love acting. Uh, I want to be directing. You know, can I just say something? Because I'm looking, and this may be offset. I have a friend that just walked in, Daniel Kellison. Do you know who Daniel Kellison oh, hey, is? Hey, Daniel. We'll put his Instagram do, handle do, up here. Do you know who he is? Uh, I don't know Daniel. I'm sorry. But Daniel, this is a guy, he's listening on the other side. Rick Glassman is a guy that you should know. And you, he is a guy that you, you two together could do. I was talking to him the other day. I'll tell you who Daniel Kellison is. So Daniel Kellison wrote all the Mission Impossibles. Close. <laughs> I think Daniel Kellison is responsible for at least all the good stuff that we see in late night right now. So what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. So there was he can he can he'll go on the mic when I talk to you. So Daniel <laughs> put him on the spot so much. No, but I'm, I'm saying even if this doesn't end up on the podcast and it should, Jeremy, we even, can put it on Patreon. If you go to Patreon.com. No, but I'm just saying there's some kismet that you should be together and you should look at his podcast. Wait, it's did called, you just offer it on your Patreon? Yeah. <laughs> the Take Your Shoes Off podcast is his podcast. And he's also on a show called As We See It, which is uh, uh, three people in the spectrum trying to make their way through life. But he's oh, got this odd, you would like him. Okay, so let me tell you. Once upon a time, there was only The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was Jack Parr and Steve Allen. And then the, the when- It was people, almost you. People with bubblegum, not even close. Okay. And then- the, the, what would you say when your parents' Tonight Show, the Johnny Carson Show, what do you think the next, in your mind, what turned that a little bit on its head and made it more palpable for younger people? What would you say the next step after Johnny Carson would be? I, I don't know. Are you talking about Leno and Letterman? Letterman. Right. So Letterman. Like doing his, his Taco Bell drive through stuff? So Daniel Kellison is the producer and probably responsible for everything that you loved about Letterman. Oh, do you work on Letterman? Cool. No, he, everything, everything. Mission from, Impossible and Letterman? No, no, <laughs> no I'm You're saying he's it. he's the guy who talked Drew Barrymore into standing on the desk and showing him her tits. He's the guy. Oh, uh, oh, oh no, that's uh, not something. Uh, no, no, Dad, uh, uh, that's not something to be proud of. No, uh, uh, no. It was a different time. No, no. no I know no. what you're saying. What you're saying is you're the one that convinced Drew Barrymore or other talent to do outrageous things that otherwise would not have been seen. For example, showing their tits and their pussy and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. Thanks. Now he I made know. it more palatable. Talk palatable. about Mission Impossible. No, but if you read, and he hasn't, but if you read the book, if you read the the unauthorized biography of the David Letterman show, he is given the the um, he is given the the prominence. Not the prominence. Uh, he's responsible for everything so. that everybody loved about Letterman. So what are you doing here? Do you work on this show? You got no, he friends? just asked for directions. So he's just a buddy of mine, and, and we, do, we do other things together. And then he also, besides that, he started uh, a company which is then sold with Sarah Silverman. J Jash. You know what Jash was? Yeah, I, I did a, a Vegas uh, a Vegas.com commercial years ago with Jash. So he would probably have been your producer, or, or no? Part of it, but I know what it was. Yeah, he ran the company. So, uh, do you know Jensen Carp? He was a writer for you. I know Jensen Jeff. very well. Yeah. Yeah. So he. So and and not only that, he, which I thought was great. Uh, uh, God rest his soul. Uh, when Norm Crosby, when Norm Crosby, <laughs> Norm Macdonald, when Norm Macdonald, uh, did you ever see his uh, talk show, which was like a yeah. podcast, which was just on Apple? Uh -huh. That was him. He did that. And it became so prominent and he had everybody on it and it was like the cameras were really close and it was really uncomfortable and raw and authentic and real. And then Netflix bought it and I don't know that they did such a great job with it because they tried to produce it. No obligations. I don't know if I want this, if you want this or if you guys want this, but I would love to do an episode with the three of us. Um, and you come in at the very beginning, of leave, course. and come back at the end. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's <laughs> and you produce and direct that episode, but at my place. Okay. Sure. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, no, but I'm just saying that <laughs> he's got such a- Will you a direct something for my podcast? He, oh, yeah, I don't know if he's a director. He's a producer and he's a, he, I, do you direct? I, I could, I could direct a podcast, I think. Wow, amazing. <laughs> we, I, have a lot of I love that he's doing that because that this can... podcast that you're on right now has no director. Yeah. So, and he can do that. Nor advertisements. <laughs> or, or ads. It doesn't seem like it's that hard. No, <laughs> no. But what I'm saying is with his connections and his friends and you're kind of an odd, you know, uh, uh, square. Eccentric. Yeah. But you would love his taste and i just see that you two should be doing something together and i think it would just really explode and you should look him up 
See who he is. You should watch. I'm talking to Callison. You no should... obligations. Well, you know, oh, but it's I, nice I'm to meet to. people, and it's a, it is kind of you to make an introduction. Um, but uh, I would suggest uh, there's some episodes I said you, or you can check out the Six Lead. Go to RickGlassman.com. Click on the Six Lead to see an award-winning <laughs> web series, or on Amazon Prime. That's as we see it. Start with the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, Rick Glassman. Let's welcome Rick Glassman to the How He Does Stuff podcast. That's our cold open, by the way. Wow. <laughs> totally undirected. Amazing. Isn't it amazing how he's just Do you a, need a director? He doesn't need one. Yeah. He's a producer, big time. Yeah. He's not much of a collaborator, but if he ever wanted to collaborate. I'm a great collaborator. Listen, I'm my, my whole thing is uh, attach my wagon to your star and just we go. That's how we Oh, go. never mind. <laughs> Let's get Lovitz back on the phone. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but he has. Very and cool that you worked with Letterman like that. And Thanks. still does. Still does stuff with him you, and Letterman. Do you do stuff with his, um, uh, uh, this next guest knows, needs no introduction? No, but, but, but we got Dave to come in and help with the Norm McDonald show. Wow. Um, he can call Dave in a, at a... Why don't you get Dave on the podcast? Is that possible? I, I haven't asked. I'm not talking about on your podcast. That's the one that you'll produce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get Letterman to come over, please. Uh, all right, great. We'll Imagine. But he's good friends with everybody. But that beyond his friendship with every his his wife is a producer of the Kimmel Show, and uh, a talent. Jimmy producer. or George? Um, no, I don't know what the first name Mr. Kimmel's first name is. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh the the bigger one. Yeah. No, he does. He does. The, she does the Kimmel Show. She's a talent producer so wait, on wait, that. You're just here. Yeah. Yeah. To watch this? To watch you. <laughs> he doesn't even have ads. I'm a friend of, uh, of Howie. Howie. It's Howie. <laughs> I do that joke. Not a good friend. I right. do that I, joke, too. Yeah. <laughs> we just do the same shit. Yeah. No, we're, we've been friends for a while, yeah. and uh, I've been dying to work with him, and we've been trying to do stuff together. Well, I got good news. You could produce three ads that we're going to do after this that's going to come out in our episode. He's, he's, he's good more news. than good, good news. Good news for you. But and I have to say, real quick, let me interrupt. Uh, sometimes, interrupt what? It's your, you're the guest. Uh, sometimes this kind of stuff could get exhausting. And I, I am somebody who very much does preach getting a really good night's sleep. And that's why I suggest going to helixsleep.com slash Tyso for up to $200 off all mattress orders. And get this, two free pillows. You're your back sleeper, your side sleeper, you're cold, you're hot. It doesn't matter. You go online, you take the two-minute sleep quiz. The mattress is delivered to your door, and you get 10 days to try it risk for. I'm, you know what? I messed that up. I'm sorry. To go it's actually again. 100 days risk-free. Hey, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I am not a doctor, but I think I'm suffering from borderline kleptomania because I can't burp. Anyway, that the Helix, I'm not knocking your I'm not knocking your uh I'm not knocking your uh sponsor. But you can return the the mattress after 100 days. Listen, if you're the type of guy or girl or you know, uh whatever the other one Tired, uh, what that, it was it narcoleptic? Thank you. And that you want to just kind of steal 90 days sleep and it, you like it so much right. but you want to return it anyway listen that's part of the cost of new business that Helix is willing to do because they are that confident that you're going to fall so in love with their mattress that they're not worried about you sending it back because hey and when you're sleeping good you're feeling good and when you're feeling good you're not worried about returning shit you're worried about getting on with the rest of your day doing what you need to do taking care of the kids getting Rick, to work you're never really good at ads wow yeah, we're he's not good really like good that at look ads, at that yeah. he is good at ads what, what about aren't you afraid that homeless people are going to take up this opportunity I don't like to, to have brand new mattresses for 90 days and every 90 days they have a brand new mattress that's filthy on one side from the road. Howie, Howie. What? Howie, it's um <laughs> it's people that are uh uh that don't have homes. They're not it's not a type of person that's homeless. It's a situation that anybody one of any one of us could find ourselves Home in. Home free? What is the term? And listen, what, what is the term now for homeless? Free. Uh home impaired? Home impaired, that's them day. Not the term. Well, you know, just like you know, uh, uh, unfortunate, roofless, whatever it is. It's, it's she is roofless. No, Howie, we can't make jokes about this because anybody, any one of us could find ourselves in this situation, and that's why I love Bombas. What Bombas does is every pair of socks sold, one is donated. Bombas doesn't sponsor my podcast, but I have been trying for a while. Never make assumptions. Why is that a good I, thing? I, why is that a good thing that Bombas gives a sock to? Like who? It's, it is it's, the number one most requested thing from homeless shelters. Sucks. Because mm -hmm. I, and I learned this first in Forrest Gump. How well, that's before they knew they can get a free mattress for 90 days. <laughs> if you had your choice between socks and a free brand new mattress, what would you get? i go with the mattress. Yeah, maybe, but they're not as portable. Hey, never make assumptions. Hi. Never make assumptions because when you make assumptions, you inevitably will make an ass of you, MP. 
shuns. That joke works if you say, I don't like making assumptions because it always makes an ass out of you. MP shuns. But the MP shuns isn't as strong as the other part. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to come with you to Vegas. <laughs> March 28th, yeah. Tropicana. Through the 3rd of me. April, it falls on the 1st when I'm giving away $83 eight bucks. billion. Dollars. Eight bucks. What else? Are we still having I, fun, or is this... I, John I, Lovitz I, I is going to... You know, John Lovitz plays the Tropicana. He's got he his own show. He said he was going to call back. He was at the bank. He didn't call back. He has his own show at 7 o'clock. He didn't want to be on. The, the I think Tropicana. we're wrapping up. Are we wrapping up? I'm having a good time, oh, there's somebody. Yeah, okay, what was this? This just in. What is this? How are you? Chris Clements. Hey, Chris. Should I sit? Should he sit? Um, yeah, Lou, give him room. This way you can move out. I don't want to put people too close to Rick. It's fine. Okay. It's a, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Okay Just uh, sit over there, and you can yell if you have something Seriously, important to say. If I have something important to say? <laughs> you can sit over there. Sit in the booth. All right. Good. All right. Just uh, don't knock the Who's camera. Chris Clemens? Thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm a tattoo artist in Los Angeles. What do you mean, Angeles? thanks for having you on? You just walked into the room <laughs> and said, I'm Chris Clemens. I'm stealing the show. No, I'm just kidding. Do you know, Rick? <laughs> Funny stuff, dude. 20, this is how you do it. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm the owner of uh, Tat Shoes, and I'm actually making uh, some pairs of custom shoes for your games. Uh, Howie's, Howie's Games. Game. I have, see? Howie's Games. I have my own. You can go to Howie's Games. What is Howie's Games? Oh, it's a really cool new app. He has a bunch of games on it. And uh, in the game, you'll actually be able to wear... You try to infect me. You chase me. It's like... It, really? Uh, yeah, it is. You try to you chase me and you try to infect me. You can cough on me. You can touch me. And the way you win... Is Lou a character? A coughing character? No, but the way you... Instead of downloading weapons, you get like hand sanitizers and masks and a mask suit and things like that. But what is yeah, that? Yeah, it's really cool. So actually, I made these for you. Uh, tat shoes are custom one-of-a-kind shoes that are hand-painted by myself. Wow. Um, in the game, you'll be able to wear them as well. Uh, and as a Japanese tattoo artist, uh, you know, Japanese tattoos have a lot of symbolism. Wait, you're a Japanese tattoo artist? I, I'm not personally Japanese. I do Japanese style oh, okay. tattoos. Yeah. But uh, I made you a, a <laughs> custom pair um, and tigers symbolize warding off disease and germs. Oh, wow. So these are for you. Thank you. Size 10 and a half, I believe. Yes. That's just amazing. Those are really cool. So can people order them on the game? Uh, yes, you'll be able to order them on the game. Uh, they'll also be available as <laughs> NFTs. Let me get that 20 back before we forget. Oh, they're available. Right, right these are amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Look at how nice these are. I'm going to hold them really up to cool. the camera. If you're watching it on YouTube, these are really what nice. What size things. are those? 10 and a half, he said. Yeah. Why? What size do you wear? 13. Can you? What? what I'm, I'm a size 12. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you can also get I them. I think uh, he's hinting. I think you're missing a hint. Size Are your 11? cameras on a thing that you could move? Yeah. 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 You're just noticing you've been here for an hour. He's just, uh, Rick is fascinated that the camera moved. That's awesome. You haven't seen that movie? I haven't seen I haven't I haven't seen it move before. No, they're they're shooting on all the cameras. Jeremy is cutting. It's being there's a switcher. Yeah, th that I know, but I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's like what Letterman had. Well, I think Letterman had more, right, Daniel? Multiple angles. <laughs> yes. You know what happened? So uh, th wait, came. these are one wait, wait. of a kind. Can people yeah. order them? And those are those are one on one. So what you can do is I have a website called tattoos.com. It's spelled T A T T S H O O S, kind of like tattoos and shoes. Uh, you go on and you get a one on one custom pair uh, just for you. And Thank I you. also am coming out with a different line of limited edition ones that Thank you. will have multiple Thank ones. You. But and also at HowieGames.com, you can do it like a skin. You can actually put the shoes, uh, that digitized shoes, exactly. on your character That's as you chase me around and try well. to make... What? He looks sleep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to wear them in the game uh, and buy them through the game as well. These are dueling sponsors. <laughs> Slash Tyso. <laughs> For a podcast that doesn't have any sponsors, this is just, we had a lot. It's just a, a whole full. episode of sponsors. These are really, you're really talented. Oh, you do thank this you by so hand. much. And you yeah. do, did you do your, you don't do your own tattoos though. Uh, I have tattooed myself. I didn't do these, but uh, yeah, that, that's my main what did, thing. What did you put on yourself? Uh, I did this little peach on my wrist and I've also tattooed a little bit on my legs. So you put a peach on your wrist and a yeah. little bit on your legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have any tattoos, Rick? Not yet. You want one? No. We could do one right now for you on the show. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, but no, 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 no. What about Helix mattresses? I want on one. your on your ass. We could do that. You want free a advertisement? Yeah, she's been begging from the time she's been a kid. And you're waiting for him to say okay? Well, no, uh, I just haven't. What would you yet. get? Tell a her. camel on my toe. We've oh, talked nice. about this before. Oh, camel yeah. too. Because of vaginas. 
Yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to do a Manscaped commercial? <laughs> <laughs> not with my dad right similar to that i've seen that tattoo it's like a little guy with a lawnmower and the guy puts it by his pubes his manscape oh that's it looks like he's funny <laughs> rick like it. you want that one i don't you know, consider it you have I to give me someone, more than 20 dollars though i saw someone on their hand with a baby yoda and a trampoline under it so when you open and close your hand the <laughs> baby yoga yoda is jumping on the trampoline that's awesome yeah well that's great so howie games is that what it's called howie's games howie games howie's games you go and you can play the games and you can win. You could also buy the shoes there. They're going to be NFTs Howie's and Howie's games. Yeah. I want to put it up and uh, thank you. No, oh, that's amazing. You are such an amazing artist. I love these. I'm actually going to wear these. Oh, cool. I am. And you can have the same shoes as me. If you go to that, <laughs> you could bring them over next time you come and take them off. Well, it's up to Daniel. Daniel's producing it. So if he wants me to bring the shoes, we're going to, I'm going to be doing take your shoes off podcast my, too. My I should wear the shoes. shoes. Oh, off. very cool. And if those remain indoor shoes, I would let you keep them on. Right on. Well, that we, what he means is because he's a germaphobe like me, I can't wear these on the road. I'll keep them on the table until I go to your, I'll be the only person ever on your podcast to have worn shoes. My no. grandma did once. The bubblegum generation. <laughs> she wore shoes on your podcast? My grandma was the only person who had worn shoes on, yeah. Were you upset about that? I didn't like it. I didn't talk to her for a little bit after, but no, it was okay. How old is your grandmother? 91. Wow, that's fantastic. You gotta get those little booties to put over. Um, yeah, it was, uh, she, I, I asked her to take the shoes off when she came in. She said uh, she doesn't want to, and I just, I just went, I think this is okay. And then he said, so then take your bra off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, no, because it's it, sagging. Hey, hey. <laughs> what? Who are you to make fun of her? Don't make fun of a My grandma's tits are firm. Well, it's LA. They might be. You never know. My gra <laughs> his grandma's tits are firm. That is the liner for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Rick comes on and talks about his grandma's tits. Are they firm? To the touch? I haven't touched them, but they, they, they're, they're solid. She's a, you know, Jewish, Jewish grandmas. They got, I don't know if this is tacky, but they got nice tits. They always do. I don't it know just, if it's tacky as much as it's wrong. Because they did. I want to make an announcement that I was doing on this broadcast, on this podcast, and it's the second time in five years. <laughs> what? I have been nominated. He's not on a mic. He's not. People <laughs> no just hear noise <laughs> in the background, but it's okay. I promise to the people who are listening at home, humor is just spewing just out. Put up subtitles that is it's like when you hear com it's like Tyso. no, but you know what it's like when you're in a club and there's a great comic, but you can hear the bartender working on the blender, and you know there's an amazing drink being made, but it's just this noise in the background. <laughs> that is a comedy blender in the background. That is great comedy being whipped up in the background. Just come to the mic. No, 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 no. It's good like no, this. No, it's good in the back. But there's a gate on and it keeps going out and in and it's what? distracting. He doesn't like the sound of it. He doesn't like the... What don't you like? It goes out and in. You yell louder. You yell louder. An audio gate on, right? No. no. Yeah, there's something. Well, Caroline's saying no. Do you know what an audio gate is, Caroline? No, but we can hear No. Live. No. <laughs> She's, <the one> <laughs> She's saying you. no. no. She, it it's it's when you can hear stuff and then when there's silence, you don't even hear the room tone anymore. Yeah. And it's just... Well, we should ask... The, you, can, you can ask Kyle. Kyle's the sound engineer. What's up? Who cares? You know he's watching. He hasn't been, he he's wasn't a sound listening engineer. to I, 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 I'm aware of what a, what a noise gate is, yes. Do we, ha do do we, we have, have one? one? I don't know. Jeremy, do we have one? <laughs> no, we don't. It's a good thing that we you don't have a director. We don't. I, you, put the sh you did the shoe plug before this because people are They're out. really good at going anyway. This has been a great episode. Tyso. Thank you. I want everybody to subscribe. I want you to uh, review. I want you to comment. Come on over I want you to, to my merch. Come on over to my podcast to watch our episode because it is. It's the same time. I'm going to be on Tyso the same day. On Take your shoes off. And Rick, I love you. I hope this is the beginning of a great relationship. Um, well, I'm sticking around because we're going to do some ads. We'll do some ads. And and I, I love the shoes. Yeah, yeah. Cool again, so what much. is your website? Give that a uh, go. It's called tattoos.com. T-A-T-T-S-H-O-O-S. -T -T -O -O Thank you. Combination so of tattoos and shoes. And Lou, yes. is there anything you want to add? Just yell in the background as I'm we... the fermenter of the plotters. Close. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I was put the music in now. Music. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's insane! <laughs> Lou, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard! That was amazing, Lou. Why didn't you say that when the show was on?